One of the conversations that we tend to have around the benefits of electric vehicles is that they are mechanically simpler than internal combustion engine vehicles. With people suggesting that EVs have on average 90% fewer moving parts than fossil vehicles. And part of that conversation is therefore that servicing and maintenance of EVs will be simpler and cheaper than fossil cars. And therefore as well, that they may last longer. I mean, on this, on this channel, I did a video where I borrowed a friend's 312,000 mile Tesla for the weekend. And yeah, that car had had some work on it in those 312,000 miles, but it still drove like a dream. I'm not sure I've been in many fossil cars with 300,000 miles on the clock. Our old petrol car had some fairly significant issues at 110,000 miles. So I guess the question for me is, as a new EV owner, do we need to service EVs if there's much less to go wrong? And what are we really checking in an MOT for an EV? Well, I guess the answer is that, well, no, no car needs to be serviced, but it's probably, it'll run better and it'll probably last longer if it is serviced by a competent mechanic. And I guess EVs are the same. And then in terms of MOT for any car, an MOT has a number of safety tests to make sure that you don't hurt yourself and others. We have some family in Florida where they don't have MOTs. So it's all on you to make sure the car's safe and all on you if it isn't safe, which I guess is fairly frightening. But yes, an EV needs to go through those same checks and testing to make sure it's roadworthy in the UK. So in an EV MOT, we're checking the lights, the seat belts, the tires, the brakes, the steering and the suspension. Um, but we're not doing the emissions part of an MOT because an EV doesn't have a tailpipe, but everything else is tested. So this week, our four-year-old Nissan Leaf was due its MOT. So I booked in a service and an MOT at our local electric vehicle specialist here in Durham, Kinghorn Electric Vehicles, and asked George Kinghorn if he would talk me through what happens at an EV service. And he gave me some behind the scenes, uh, a behind the scenes tour at his EV conversion business too. But before we head over to George, if you're interested in low carbon technology and you haven't already subscribed, don't forget to hit the subscribe button for similar videos about electric vehicles, heat pumps, and the low carbon transition over the next few months this autumn. But since you're here now, over to the workshop to see what an EV service is like. Okay, so my car was due a service. So I've come to a electric vehicle specialist, King Horns in Durham, uh, to get this done. And I'm gonna to chat to George about what has happened in this service for our car. So let's see. So basically, as we've discussed, lots of people think that electric cars don't need service, but they're just a mechanical car like everything else. They've got less to go wrong. So we have to check all of the wear and tear items. So if we start at the front, it's probably the, the best place to start. Um, we go through and make sure that all the high voltage cables are, are, are present and correct and there's no damage on them and that they're connected okay. Um, Let's get them all out. Yeah, yeah, cool. But that's a, something you hardly ever do yourself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's Charge flap, really. Yeah, so you look at, if you look at the motor, there's lots of orange cables. Anything with orange on it means it's high voltage. They're perfectly safe. I mean, they're fine to touch and they're even fine to um, wash as long as you don't put too much pressure into them. But they can become damaged and corroded. Sometimes, especially in the front, in the charge port area, you can get a, a lot of water can get in there. So we, we just check around all of that, make sure that everything's okay on it. Because if it, if it has any problems at all with corrosion, then it can short, which then will just cut, make the car completely shut down, which is great. It means that it's always safe, but if you're stuck somewhere that you don't want to be, so making sure that all of those are okay and clean and everything like that. Um, we then, after we've done the, the physical checks of the motor, we run a, a complete battery diagnostic. So that's where we can see what the state of health is. It's really how balanced the, the modules are. So in a Nissan Leaf, you've got six, 96 modules, sorry, 96 cells within 24 modules um, I always forget which way around it is um, and they need to be nicely balanced between them that's what the battery management system's job is but as they get older they get more worn and they can get out of kilter sometimes it might be that only one module needs replaced not one cell which we can we can drop the battery we can replace the, the cells and we can rejuvenate the battery that way sometimes it might need half the pack replacing 
but we can do that and we can also do battery swaps um, so this yellow car here this is a very early 2011 um, car which is actually a famous car it's in an art house film which i always forget the name of um, and i must look up um, and it's a it was a 24 kilo hour battery in it its range had got down to about 40 miles we've put a used 40 kilo hour pack out of a new shape leaf in it and now it's got 130 mile range so we've given it 90 miles more range than it had before um, so yeah the, 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 all of these look well that and these look different but they're actually the same car underneath okay. so when the new shape came out all they did was they changed the the rear end of the car and the nose um, but actually the, the the chassis and the main part of the car are the same so the battery boxes and the motors are actually the same between those ones and, and these ones so you can swap lots and lots of components between the between the two of them so i i have th this is my wife's car now this is an x taxi 62 kilowatt hour with 120,000 miles on it but i also have a, an early 2011 leaf i think it's number nine 1400 off the production line and I, that, that's what i'll always keep there i've got a nice blue one of those there. so back to your car we've done the um the the heart the the the, the cable um check done the battery check and then we do kind of the mechanical checks. We check the brakes, the suspension all around the car. We'll ch check all of the, um, the, the systems within the car as well. Anything that needs lubing. Oh, going back a little bit to the motor. One area that does get a lot of wear is the transmission. It hasn't got a traditional gearbox. It's, it's a reduction gearbox. So it's only one speed, but a lot of people abuse them. So you can press park as you're still doing five mile an hour and it will lock the, the gearbox solid, but it'll chip the edges of the tooth. Up. So we make sure that there's not a load of swarf in the oil. If the oil needs topping up, we'll do that as well. Um, they are, Nissan will tell you they're sealed for life, but basically what they mean is they're sealed for the life of the warranty, which I think is 80,000 or 100,000 miles, depending on the car. But we find a lot of wear and tear in the gearboxes. So we make sure that they are as right as they can be. And changing your transmission fluid regularly stops that from happening so if you keep your car a long time we're going to be doing over a hundred days we recommend getting that done kind of around about the 60 to 80 thousand mile mark um and then it really is just a, a, a case of checking all of the, the the systems and anything that can mechanically wear on the system obviously there's no exhaust or clutch none of that stuff but it is just making sure that your your brakes and your suspension are working properly and we kind of say with evs brake pad wear is going to be a bit less yeah. that's when you see yeah, yeah. so yeah we, we Generally, the regeneration will, will actually do most of the braking in it. So in the conversions that we do, um, the Morris Miners is our bread and butter, and they come with drum brakes, which are notoriously terrible. But when it's an electric car, we turn the regen up, and the, the, brake drums, sorry, the drum brakes are good enough to stop the car because they don't do a lot of the actual work. The, the, the regen does most of the work, and, and the brakes are just the last little bit. So. So that's the overview from George. Uh, with the invoice, he gave me uh, this test check sheet to explain what they did and how the car rated on the on their traffic light system. So they checked a load of things. First of all, the motor cooling system. Uh, they checked for any leaks and the level and strength of antifreeze, the condition of the hoses and connections on that system. They then checked the transmission, which is different to a conventional gearbox, but still in place for an EV. They checked the steering system, the brake fluid, the brake pads, discs and lines. They check the tyres, suspension and wheels, recommending that our front tyres should be replaced soon. And then they check the electrical system, including battery diagnostics and charge port condition before renewing the dust and pollen filter and a general check over the car body. Our car passed on all these checks, but the team's recommendation was that the front tyres were replaced as soon as possible. And this car does have its full service history, so it looks like it may well have been maintained well over the first few years of its life. Um, or it could be that Leafs or EVs in general don't need much in terms of servicing. So we'll see as, as we live with it over the next few years. As part of the service, the, the team replaced the pollen filter on the uh, incoming air system. And overall for the service and the MOT and that pollen filter, the cost was 180 pounds and 53 pence including VAT. And I guess that's probably a similar price to a fossil service and MOT. Maybe it's on the cheaper side uh, of that. But on most of the MOTs in our old car, we would tend to have had to spend several hundred pounds of work to get it through each year. So we'll see in the next few years if the costs for this leaf stay low.
George was kind enough to show me around the workshop and some of the conversions that they have underway at the moment, including a Morris Minor that uh, we might be able to have a look at to make a video about when it's done and a car under wraps for an unknown celebrity or an unnamed celebrity, which looks very cool. George and the team are Leaf specialists and have used Leaf parts to convert a number of classic cars in the past as well as servicing cars like mine and then selling EVs through the business as well. Uh, so it's brilliant to have a specialist like Kinghorn's two miles down the road from us. And George has profiled some of his conversions over on YouTube, um, which you can have a look at, I'll, I'll link below as well, including several Morris, Morris Miners, a 1969 Mercedes, a Datsun Cherry, a Jag S-Type, a Reliant Scimitar, a oh. Nissan Newbor, Newbird, and I'm sure a few more. It's pretty amazing what they can achieve with a bit of creativity and a willing and probably fairly well-resourced owner. Okay, that's all from me, short video, um, but thanks to George for talking us through EV servicing. If you've got this far and you don't subscribe to my channel already, please don't forget to hit the button and come along for the journey.